Up uh, next, it will be ASBA Discovery, encouraging the next generation of aviators in Malaysia. We will be coming back shortly. Thank you. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for staying with us. And now uh, we have our very special session, ASBA Discovery. Together with us, we have uh, Ms. Kim Chua, the Director of Student Success Embraer-Riddle Aeronautical from Singapore. Hi, Kim. How are you? Hi, Ida. And it's we great. have Dr. Muhammad Hafizi bin Shamsuddin from MIAT, Malaysia Institute of Aviation Technology. And uh, also we have uh, Mr. Muhammad Aizuddin bin Ilyas the one of our LAE from Polytechnic Banting. Thank you for being with us today. Welcome. Okay, so um, uh, allow me to introduce uh, ASBA Discovery. Uh, this is one component that is bridging the uh, industry and the institution. Uh, it is a very important component to close the gap between the industry and the institution and then this is one of the very critical part to ensure the continuity of the talent pool right. in our industry. Okay, so um, now let's go to Kim. Kim, uh, how are you today? I'm great. Thank you for your invitation and thanks to all. I'm just very, um, you know, uh, privileged to be part of this very distinguished uh, panel. So I, th I agree with you. It is a very important uh, initiative to be able to bridge the talent gap that we currently experience in the aviation and aerospace uh, industry in Malaysia and Singapore. So good initiative, Esma. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, um, for a start, do you mind share with us what is latest now in Embraer Riddle Singapore? Is there a new initiative crafted uh, recently due to this COVID-19 pandemic? So in Embraer Riddle Aeronautical University Asia, we take pride in the fact that we support our eagles um, during school and after school. So um, I understand and we all understand that COVID has been a very difficult time for the aviation industry, for the aviation professionals. So we have actually crafted three financial, um, you know, aid uh, for the existing students. So the first one will be a, stu a study grant for all existing students who are enrolled in Embry Riddle Aeronautical University Asia. Um, a one-time off study grant granted to all current students. Um, the second one that we have is specific to COVID-19. Uh, it's called the COVID-19 scholarship. And for applicants who apply to Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Asia uh, uh, during 2020 to 2021, they will respectively receive generous um, you know, grants to offset their, their uh, tuition fees. So that's specific to new applicants. And the third financial aid program that we have has been in place uh, even before COVID, but I thought it's worth mentioning because we're very proud of this Returning Eagles um, scholarship, whereby we encourage our Eagles uh, who have graduated with a bachelor's degree to come back to Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Asia, you know, to uh, continue with their higher degrees like a PhD or master's degree and to, you know, to thank them for their support. We also give them a very generous, um, you know, tuition fee grant of 10,000. Um, additionally, that's financial. Additionally, um, my Office of Student Success has also been very instrumental in making sure that uh, my students, are supported in terms of emotional and mental um, health and well-being. So since last year, we have uh, curated a series of mental and emotional health talks with experts in the field, right? So we've, uh, we've actually invited psychologists, psychotherapists, uh, mental health practitioners to come and speak with students to talk about it, um, you know, topics like anxiety, anger management, um, stress management, because we think it's very important to take care of our students' 
in these trying times. Um, these talks are also available to all faculty members to attend as well. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is also the um, alumni mentoring initiative. We understand that um, graduating last year and this year will be a very trying period because um, the industry has been very hard hit, right? And, and there might be limited opportunities for the graduating class of 2020 and 2021. So to sort of um, support our graduating classes, we have this alumni mentoring initiative and um, our alumni have actually stepped forward to volunteer their time, their, their expertise to support us by being uh, mentors to students who have applied to be mentees. So it's a four month program. Uh, they are matched with a, a mentor and the mentor basically gives them industry insights, perspectives, tips, strategies, um, and even suggestions on how to navigate certain, certain um, scenarios uh, in, the, in, the employment, in the employment landscape. So that's just some of the initiatives we've come up with to support our students as well. Thank you. I think that is fantastic. You you have you you crafted very well balanced. You know the financial part, the mental part, and then having this al alumni supporting the current student on mentor and mentee program. I think that's really fantastic. Thank you, Kim. And now uh, let's go to Dr. Hafizi. Uh, this is interesting. We heard that Mia is one of the best aviation institution uh, in Malaysia. Is that true? And if it's true, uh, I'm sure so many audience out there would love to know why, Doctor. Right, Aida, I will be losing my job if I say it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, of course it's true, right? Okay. Um, I think um, we have been um, taking pride of what we do for the past uh, 20 years. Right. I, think, I think MIAT has been very niche. Oh, yes. in terms of the area that we focused on. Yeah. We focused on aircraft maintenance, right? Yeah. And we've been doing this uh, for the past 20 years, right? Excellent. So uh, if one thing that you want to actually impress your customer is basically when they ask you what you do, is that we've been doing only this for the past 20 years. Yeah. That shows that the, the confidence level that we have been gaining thus far uh, over the past 20 years and the sort of quality that we can actually progress through in the field that we do. Excellent. Right. So, and what is the secret? Right. Like uh, you asked me, and uh, what is the secret? I guess the secret would be a balance between having, you know, a, a good manpower within Yat. Right. Because we are heavily on, in terms of technical aircraft maintenance, um, we have a good balance between, you know, those coming from the industries and also lecturers coming from, you know, um, a research background. Right. Right. So we can deliver both well. Fantastic. You know? So we can give the students in terms of the knowledge of the theoretical, theoretical knowledge and in terms of the uh, practical knowledge as well. Right. Right. And the other thing that is actually uh, differentiates us from the rest, I guess, that I'm very proud of uh, to actually say this is uh, we, so far, we are the only university status that has both uh, approval from the local authority, C, uh, Civil Aviation Authority Malaysia, CA yeah. Malaysia, and also YASA. Fantastic. As the uh, Part 147 uh, right. approved training organization. And um, because of that, you know, we have to be different, yes. right? So how do we differentiate ourselves from the rest is, I think, you know, we come up with a concept which I think has been muted by well my uh, my sifu I guess you know from 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 my previous bosses, and um, we've been designing what we call as a teaching factory, right? Right. So one of our baby campus in Subang uh, is a fa teaching factory concept. Yes. You know, so um, we are proud of having the industry within us, right? Fantastic. So this is something different and unique that we provide right to our students because why because we think that giving them the exposure of the aviation industry right. is critical right right so that um, when they come to uh, when they come to school or when they come to the university 
they come together with industry. You know, right. they come together yes. with the people that yes. work. Together. With, yeah, together. Yeah. So when they go out and work, they will not be alien with the environment. Right. Right. So they have, uh, we have the real 145 uh, uh, company operating in Miat Subang. Right. So they can actually observe, not just observe, they can yeah. also involved, right, Fantastic. in the acti yeah. activity as well. So I think it is crucial that uh, when it comes to this, um, uh, the things that we do, right, to give them the, uh, the earliest possible exposure right. is key and critical, right? right? So uh, the teaching factory that we have um, is, is actually the thing that is very unique. Yes. And I'm um, proud to say that at this moment, we have about five companies operating right. in Subang. Wow. Yeah, five companies operating in Subang. And we'll be expanding this um, e even more. And we are working closely with the industry, right? right? So that we welcome them, uh, so that they work together with the university for us to actually, um, um, you know, build the future generation right. for aviation. Right. Right. Fantastic. Right. That's interesting. So the student actually could have a real life industry experience with these five companies. Exactly. That's the That's whole idea. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's very good. Thank you, Doctor. Right. And now uh, let's go to our next panelist here today, uh, Encik Mohammad Aizuddin. Lately, um, PBS Polytechnic Banting is very active and getting more involved with ASBA Discovery and ASBA Chapter Meeting. Uh, why is that so? Is there a certain benefit that really meaningful to the Polytechnic and the student? Yes. Okay, uh, first of all, thank you very much, Aida. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon to all the panelists and uh, participants. Uh, myself, on behalf of Polytechnic Banting, uh, the director of Polytechnic Banting, Dr. Noayati, all the academic and non academic staff, the students of Polytechnic Banting, we would like to congratulate uh, ASBA, first of all, for organizing uh, this uh, wonderful event. All right. Uh, we hope that. Uh, uh, more of this kind of event will be held uh, later on in Malaysia sure. because uh, as far as I'm concerned this is the first time that ASBA yeah. held uh, this kind of forum right in Malaysia. Uh, my name is Aizuddin. Uh, is it okay to introduce a little bit about yes. myself? Yeah, uh, my name is uh, Mohamed Aizuddin. I'm from Klang. Uh, I joined Polytechnic uh, Banting since 2020. Uh, I'm quite new in this uh, Polytechnic Banting, uh, less than six months. I'm still a practicing uh, licensed aircraft, uh, aircraft engineer. I've been uh, uh, involved in this field since uh, 2006. It's been more than uh, 15 years. So, uh, with the little experience that I have, I wish I could share the knowledge and everything with the students in Polytechnic Banting. Okay, with regards to your question, Aida. Uh, uh, why is poly technique banting, uh, you know, doing uh, uh, cooperation with ASBA? It's mainly due to because, uh, as far as we are concerned, ASBA is a non-profit organization. Right. It has uh, lots of members, including the major players in the industry. So, with uh, the big players in your team in ASBA, I wish uh, we could, uh, you know, sort. To maybe you can you know finalize some kind of deal you know uh, and some kind of agreement for our students in Polytechnic Banting to get more involved in the industry, especially with the bigger players. Right. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Uh, mm. And we also uh, in Asba we are very very happy to you know to directly engage. Uh, with the institution. Yes. So thank you for always being uh, very supportive and more involved uh, lately. Most welcome. Yeah. Uh, Kim, uh, expanding a tradition of excellence, that's really powerful motto of Embraer Riddle. Uh, can you share, since your establishment in 2011, how many graduates uh, that you produce and where are they currently working? Major, majority is working in Singapore or in other country in the region? So uh, thank you for that uh, little little pitch 
either. Uh, it's true, expanding a tradition of um, you know excellence is our motto. We take pride in the high quality graduates that we produce year after year. Embry-Riddle Asia is um, the youngest uh, member of the Embry-Riddle family. We have two um, very big and established um, you know, residential campuses in the US, one in the state of Florida and the other one in Arizona. Um, and also we have a very strong and very uh, established online, um, online uh, training um, university as well. So we are the youngest in the Embry-Riddle family. And you're right, uh, we've been established since 2011. We have to date produced more than 700 graduate, uh, graduates locally, regionally. Um, so just to give you an idea of the demographics of our graduates and current students, we have a good percentage of our uh, student population. We're looking at 20% international students and 80% um, Singaporeans. So they mostly come to me, you know, in uh, when they finish their national service, um, and then they pursue their bachelor of si uh, you know science and aeronautics or aviation business with us. Um, yeah, and a lot of them upon graduation go on to join the local aviation uh, and aerospace industry. So it's very heartening to know that a lot of them actually choose to to join the industry upon graduation however you know last year has been has been a really uh, it's been a really challenging year for yeah. for the graduating classes um and also um, some of my students have actually pivoted to other industries you know by by virtue of um, the fact that it's necessary out of necessity they had to pivot so I think that is inevitable, but I'm also very glad that they were able to pivot to other industries, you know, uh, that that value the skill set of an aviation uh, uh, degree. Fantastic. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. So um, that that's that's actually is very interesting. That's quite a lot, you know, having twenty percent of the international student. Uh, that going to Embraer Riddle uh, Asia and Singapore. That's that's very interesting. And uh, now let's go to Dr. Hafizi. Right. What are the challenges uh, me uh, now facing uh, due to COVID COVID nineteen, and uh, what are the solutions? Uh? Well, honestly, Ida, I think um, everybody is actually affected by oh, this yeah. uh, COVID nineteen pandemic, right? But before I think um, I answer that question. Um, let's just paint the picture, right? Sure. And how severe that the aviation industry is actually suffering from this COVID-19. Right. If you look at the recent report from ICAO, right? I think they did this study somewhere in March, I guess. Uh, they say that it is almost 60% in right. reduction, right? In, in 2020 statistic compared to 2019. Yes. Now, that 60% reduction in terms of um, passenger traveling equates to billions of US dollars, oh, yes. you know, affected the, uh, the airlines, the airports, um, you know, the ground uh, companies that operating the, the, the aircrafts and, and whatnot. So it also affects us as so the, much. yeah, as the ATO. <laughs> I'll tell yeah. you for, for two reasons, right? Um, when COVID-19 hits us, I mean, this is something unprecedented, right? Yes. We, we never saw this coming, yes. right? And a lot of the um, aviationists, I would say, uh, yes. were, were actually retrenched, you know, and, yes. and, and uh, because of that, um, it paints a picture to, to the aviation people, right? Yes. Uh, it paints a picture that, uh, or perhaps to, to the future generations, that um, the job insecurity that, that this thing is actually um, uh, uh, posting, right? So th that job insecurity is something that we have to address, right? Something yes. that is critical that we have to address. Um, and then that affects us in terms of the number of students intake that enrolls into our, our, into, into our program, okay? Uh, so how do we actually come up with a solution, right, Aida? Yes. So uh, one of it is that uh, by engaging with uh, people like, uh, us, you know, organization like ASBA, right. okay? That has been engaging with, uh, with potential feeders 
So for us to correct the mindset about the aviation industry, because to say that this is just temporarily, right? And, right. and uh, we, we are going to bounce back from, from uh, this pandemic. And I think aviation will, will always be you know, uh, the trendsetter, right? right? For all other industries. So that's how, right? The other thing that, uh, uh, the, the thing that also affects us is basically in terms of our operation itself, Aida, right? Because we are heavily in terms of practical, okay? We are very heavily in terms of practical. And now we are thinking, uh, the thing that I just mentioned to you just now about our strength is also a threat, right? <laughs> right? right. So uh, w because we never know that uh, this COVID-19, um, you know, the, the kind of effect that it brings to us, so the strength that we have is now a threat, yeah. right? So how do we move on? So luckily we have something in place, right? We, we innovate through the programs that we have. So we are now looking at uh, venturing into courses of smart MRO, right. okay? So looking at uh, introducing um, technologies like um, augmented reality, right. virtual reality, and we, we are going to go into um, simulation, simulators, Right, Fantastic. and we have uh, secure funds from the government. Oh, right? wonderful! Yeah, for for us to actually introduce this right. to the young generation. So, what we have been doing so far in the past is actually the conventional MRO. Right. Right. So the future MRO will be more digital. Yeah. Right. So, if you look at it, COVID nineteen, what it does is basically it becomes a catalyst to IR four point zero. Right. So the digital world has now become more. Uh, advance, right. right? So we have taken a step to to participate in this advancement of the digital digital world, right? Right. Uh, so that's that 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 is the second thing that we have actually uh, progressed uh, because of this uh, COVID nineteen. The other thing that we also see is that um, we have been too reliant in terms of one um, uh, critical area, which is just the MRO. So um, the moment I took office, which is um, um, I think uh, August last year, I realized that, um, you know, you, 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 there's a saying that you, you don't put all your eggs in one basket. It's, it's right. just too risky, right? Yeah. So the, this is the time where we need to think to diversify in terms of our programs, right? So now MIAT is also looking at opportunities where we can actually offer just beyond MRO, right? Beyond um, as an aircraft maintenance uh, program, beyond the aircraft maintenance program. So we are looking at opportunities to also offer uh, aviation sciences, for instance. We have at this moment aviation management, but we are also looking at other pillars to support the aviation industries. So um, COVID-19 is very interesting, Ida, right? Because uh, we never saw this coming, yeah. but it also opens up to opportunities, new opportunities yeah, for yeah. us to venture and to progress in terms of our businesses. So I think there are, there are pro and cons. But I think um, the, the key uh, solution to this is the industries and uh, the organization like ASPA, uh, together with the university and also the authority, uh, we have to work together, yes. all right? And to push forward so that we can bounce back strongly together. Right. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Wow. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Moving into smart uh, MRO, that's the future, yeah? That will be the future. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you for that, Dr. Hafizi. And now, uh, Mr. Aizuddin, I'm sure that uh, many students and parents are worried, so worried about the future career mm -hmm. and what will happen in two, three years' time uh, from now because of this pandemic. So, what is your comment, sir? Okay, uh, thank you very much, Aida uh, and Dr. Hafizi. Just as uh, Dr. Hafizi mentioned just now, due to the pandemics, as per IQO analysis of last year, the aviation world has been slumped, has been declined more than 60%. Yes. So for the industry to catch up back on track as uh, previously, it will take some time. Definitely it will take some time. Yep. But what we have to bear in mind is, uh, you know, for me, every, every cloud has a silver lining, right? So by hook or by crook, one day they will be back to normal. Yes. It will be back on track just as before. But as per, as, uh, if I'm not mistaken, as per IKO projection, uh, the volume of uh, air traffic, you know, in terms of passengers and uh, freight, will be back to normal uh, within two, three years. I think it's, if I'm not mistaken, it's 2024. 
they will get the pre-COVID volume 100% back again, you know, before 2024 or by 2024. So with regards to students, uh, uh, you know, I understand parents, you know, worrying about their kids studying in uh, colleges related to aviation, yeah. uh, such as in uh, Polytechnic Banting. Our niche uh, course is uh, aircraft maintenance. In fact, we are CAM approved aircraft training organization, part 147. Yeah. So we try hard, we try hard in Polybanting to feed the students whatever we can. You see, yes. we try to give them whatever uh, knowledge, whatever experience we could, you know, sharing with them, teaching them, you know, engaging with them, you know, listening to the concern. But the industry definitely will be back to normal someday, so I don't think the parents should worry too much uh, regarding, you know, uh, job insecurity. Yes, right now, uh, most people, uh, in particular, if you're talking about aviation world in Malaysia, you know, even my colleagues before in the commercial airlines, most of them lost their jobs. You see, they have to stand down, you know, unpaid leave, yep. but that will definitely be temporary. Once everything is normalized, then, you know, uh, this thing happened less than two years, I see. Yeah. Yeah, within two years, eh? the time frame is two years. So as per, uh, as per IKO projection, uh, the industry will be back to normal within two, three years. So you have that three years to catch up what you lost, yeah. you know, from the previous two years. So it'd be a kind of a race, you see. And I can see uh, lots of job opportunities going to be created within that two, three years. Yeah. So... Uh, for the students, especially in Polybanting, you don't have to worry too much. You will be there someday in the industry. But the most important is gain your knowledge as much as you could, even to the you know the rest of the aviation student. You don't have to worry too much. No matter where you're learning, you know, it's going to be a booming industry soon, just like before. Uh, I reckon. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you, thank you, Mister Azidit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, the student, uh, or maybe we have some parents watching with us today, worrying will not bring us far. So yeah. let's focus on the solution and let's do what we can do to improve and to make things better. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, let's get back to Kim. Do you think uh, ASBA discovery is important? And if it is, uh, share with us why. Um, I think as far discovery is a wonderful initiative that allows um, really students or anyone who's interested in the in the in the industry to find out more. Right? I think that um, it is important for a few reasons. Number one, for outreach purposes, and also for educational purposes. I think there are some misconceptions. Uh, glamorous misconceptions revolving uh, the industry, good ones. Um, and I also think that there are also untapped uh, opportunities, potential within the business uh, aviation industry that might be overlooked. I, I have to say this, you know, before I came to know about ESBA, I also had those misconceptions about, you know, business aviation. But now that I know the industry and I understand that, I, I understand and I see it in terms of its untapped potential and, you know, uh, and uh, potential opportunities, job opportunities. Um, I think this is a great initiative to sort of bridge and also build the talent pool, right? And and getting getting students to be aware that, hey, these are, these are pockets that you could tap on, leverage on, explore. I think most importantly as educators, I think uh, we can't teach everything. That's the truth, right? We can't teach everything to everyone. Mm -hmm. But what we can do is offer options, getting them to explore their possibilities. I think it's when people see possibilities, when people see potential, that's when the true magic happens. That's what I think. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Kim. I, I really like uh, that magic word. <laughs> I'm a so firm believer in magics. Yeah, um, magics do happen when you believe. So, so it, it's it's very um, encouraging to know that um, Embraer Riddle uh, take Esba uh, discovery seriously and understand uh, and feel the value that we are trying to bring. 
Uh, Dr. Hafizi, right. yeah. what more do you expect or you would like to see uh, and experience with ASPA Discovery in the future? Well, it's very interesting, Aida, when you say the future, yes. right? Um, I think um, I have to congratulate ASBA uh, because uh, for such a sterling job um, for ASBA in bridging the gap between the younger generation and also introducing or promoting the aviation world, right? right? But if we talk about the future, Aida, uh, I think we need to start to think big, right? Yeah, yes. Because the way I see it, you know, if you analyze um, the trend of the aviation industry, especially the business aviation, right? The future would be in terms of, um, you know, bringing the dimension of flying to a, to a new level. And when I say that, we're talking about remote flying, you know, we're talking about drones, we're talking about unmanned aircraft, you know. So that's the future idea. So we need to start thinking big now, you know. So when we want to educate the future generations, let's educate them on something that is, that's going to, you know, come to them in, in just a, a near uh, future, which is just three to five years, right, in, in time. So I think there is a lot of things that we need to, to be prepared. If you look at the, uh, the recent um, framework that was released by the Ministry of Science, um, uh, MOSTI, right? Yes. Uh, they have mentioned that um, drone, right, will be the future and will drive 10 promising technological um, sectors and also uh, 10 promising um, economic growth, right. right? So that is very critical, right? So I think that ASBA and also the university, we have a role, yes. right? The role is for us to actually educate the youngsters, right? Because we see nowadays that people normally see drone as, as a hobbyist, right? They, they, they normally see it as a hobbyist. But I think because this is going to actually uh, be the future of aviation, I think we have the role to actually introduce this at at, at an earlier stage. Right. All right. So perhaps, you know, one drone, one family. Wow. Yeah. Right. So, but. One drone, one family. Yeah. However, the essence of it is basically to teach them safety, the safety oh, aspect yes. of it. Yeah. Right. Because I, I, I had an engagement with, C, uh, with CEO of uh, CAM recently. You know, it's very interesting where he said, you know, he saw that the drone technology or the drone industry in Malaysia is growing rapidly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very rapidly. And yeah. it will encompass every business aspect of, uh, of the industry in, in Malaysia. Right. However, very few are still looking at the safety aspect of it. Right. right. So when you talk about safety aspect, there are two things. The technology side and also in terms of the ethical side of it. Yes. Those who are operating the drones, right. they have to be very ethical in terms of um, the safety awareness. Right. So I think that's where we can come in, you know, not just to introduce the technology itself, right. but also to actually teach the younger generation about how drone can actually affect the aviation industry and how this can become a future career for them and how they can be uh, a very ethical, um, you know, drone operator, for instance, you know, because this will be the future, right? This will be the future. So I think to answer your question, yeah, that, that will be something that I would like for ASBA and MIAT to work in the future because that is something definitely, Aida, that yeah. I will be working and I am currently working on. So I think oh, it will be very interesting for me to actually tie up with ASBA to actually uh, embark on this uh, future, um, future drone technology. Which sure, is, right. sure. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hafizi. Uh, yeah, safety is so paramount. That's why we have this session. Yeah. That's why we have this forum. That's why we continuously having a safety day, safety forum, safety summit in every country, uh, you know, um, in Asia Pacific region uh, where uh, ASBA is uh, trying to consolidate and put together, uh, put together all the in operators. Okay, now, Mr. Aizuddin, uh, bridging the industry, bridging the institution and the aviation industry is one of the activities that we always like to implement. Can you suggest what are the activities that uh, we both, the institution and ASBA, could perform to enhance uh, the win win benefit among us? Okay, thank you, Aida and uh, Dr. Avizi. Uh, rewinding back to what you mentioned just now regarding safety, in fact, safety in aviation is priority. 
Okay. That's why we have one module. If you're talking about aircraft maintenance subject, we have one module called human factor. Yes. And a little smaller module is called maintenance practices. So right. what they emphasize in these two modules are safety. Yeah. No matter what subdivision you're working in aviation, whether you're a pilot, your maintenance engineer, even your crew or ground handler, safety is always on top. Right? There's no compromise uh, when we're talking about safety. It will always be a priority. So with uh, regards to your question just now, uh, ASBA and Polytechnic Banting, what can be done further in future? I see many uh, potential you know, in our cooperation, collaboration. Mm -hmm. uh, to be frank, Polytechnic Banting, uh, we are a new player in the industry in uh, aircraft training organization. Uh, we've been uh, in the industry less than uh, eight years, I guess. But uh, mm, I'm not being boastful, I'm sorry, but in terms of uh, facilities, you know, we have you know, up-to-date, state-of-the-art workshops and hangars. In fact, we acquired a few units of uh, live fixed and rotor wings aircraft recently. So in terms of uh, uh, experience, students in Polytechnic Banting, they can earn quite a lot of experience in Polytechnic Banting alone. Yeah? But still, they have to go out to the industry to gain more knowledge and experience. Yeah. Uh, with regards to ASBA, I see that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, ASBA, they have a good connection with industry players, you know, big guns in the uh, industry. So maybe we can sort out some way to commemorate, to create more kind of this forum event in the future, you know, mm. to emphasize more on safety. You know? Even you know, for non-aviation, for aviation enthusiasts, they can join the event someday later on, you know, to get uh, more detailed knowledge regarding what aviation is all about. Yep. Uh, I think the best way to cooperate initially is uh, via forum such as this. You know? uh, I believe it's a very uh, uh, progressive way you know, uh, for our aviation industry in Malaysia specifically. Yeah. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Azudin. So, okay, so we definitely going to have a lot more forum, a lot more engagement, Embraer Riddle, PBS, and MIA with ASBA and ASBA Discovery. So, thank you for that. Um, now, uh, let's uh, wrap up and now we are heading to our conclusion uh, for this session. Okay, our panelists. This is a very interesting question. What is one thing that you would like our audience to remember you? Remember you, remember your organization today out of this engagement. Okay, number one, um, to the industry players who are with us today. Number two, to the students who are watching us right now. What, what is the one thing that you would like them to remember you? Shall I start? Yes. Okay, right. Um, okay. I think um, if I can just put it into one word, yeah. either, right? I think I will just say uh, future. Okay. Right? The future. Okay. So for the students uh, out there, um, let me just emphasize that aviation has a very bright future. Oh, yeah. Okay. It has a very bright future. And uh, don't be too worrying about what's happening at this moment because I think, like I said, it's going to bounce back. Yes. And one other thing that I think is very critical and is very uh, something crit critical that I have to actually emphasize uh, to all the potential students out there is basically, I have seen it in myself that um, the courses that we develop at MIAT is not just providing the, uh, for, for the industries. Right? But it also has developed the character of the students itself. Yeah. Because when we talk about competency, Aida, uh, there are three elements in competency. You, know, you have knowledge, you have skills. But the other thing that is also important is the attitude. Yeah. Right? And I've seen it uh, you know, uh, day after day when I, when I go out to the industry sometimes. You know, um, I didn't even realize my, 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 my students. They, they always go and say, sir, do you remember me? You know? <laughs> and I've seen such character being developed in right. them. So I'm seeing that you know, aviation is a good platform you know, because the sort of training like uh, MIAD, Polytechnic Bunting, that, that we actually grill them 
it really builds the attitude and the character in them. So for those potential students out there, if you would like to have a bright future to build your character, to build your career, I think why not explore? Um, or why not put it in your list, in your wish list? You know, I'm not saying that aviation is the only one that can actually produce that kind of uh, character, but I think you should not uh, disregard aviation, you know? Mm. So put it in one of your list. And to the industry players, Aida, right? Yes. Um, we have to work together yes. for the future. Sure. Yeah? So like I said, Nia, uh, at this moment in time, we are developing the future MRO. Sure. Uh, so we will provide the training in terms of what the future MRO entails. Right. The augmented reality, the virtual reality, using, um, using drone for inspection. Right. Um, and then we have the simulation, simulator, right? Later on that we will introduce. So there is no doubt that um, the industry, the authority, and also the university. These three things, and also the organization like you guys, sure. we have to work together right, to build the future for the students, right? right. for those who will be our future leaders sure. one day. Sure. Right. We have to work together. Yeah. yeah? OK, um, how about you, Mr. Azuddin? OK, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to convey a message to the industry. Uh, on behalf of Polytechnic Banting, our arms are wide open to invite you, come and visit us. You know, we talk, we see what we can, uh, in whatever way feel or we can co collaborate someday in the future. Uh, even uh, me, you're yeah. most welcome to join us. You know? And uh, to the students, I uh, just have uh, one sentence uh, to remind you. Think aviation, uh, think polybanting. <laughs> Could be my trademark. <laughs> okay, thank right. you so much. Welcome. Uh, and now, all the way from Singapore, Kim, what is the one thing, one thing that you would like uh, our audience to remember you out of this engagement? One to the industry and another one to the students. Thank you. So I'll start with the students. I say this in classes all the time. I tell them, you don't need to be the strongest, the leanest, the meanest to thrive in the industry. I think the industry offers uh, fairly equal opportunities. But what you do need to be is make sure that you're the best informed. So stay connected to the industry by, you know, attending forums like this, right. you know, following uh, aviation thought leadership. Um, and also being being aware of the trends that are shaping the the industry and staying on top, making sure that you are you know in the aisle and the the the, the corridors of information incoming information. Make sure you park yourself there. All right, that's to the students being the best informed. Number two to industry players. I think there's a lot of talk and a lot of chatter about deep tech. Um, for me, I'm trained as a social scientist. I always believe that just as tech is important, the human side of things is also important. So okay. don't forget the deep human side of the industry. How are you taking care of your people? How are you retaining? How are you attracting talents? How are you developing talents? So I think that's very important because even though the industry may be going through a digital uh, transformation right now as we speak, innovation and all of that. But I think it's also important to bear in mind it is it is still very much a very human-centric industry. Yeah. So let's not lose sight of that. Um, you know, continue to, to foster the deep human qualities um, of our aviation professionals. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Uh, that's really important to pay serious attention to the human side of us. You know, we, we in aviation, even though how, how demanding, how stressful uh, it is, we are still human. Yeah. And, and we cannot take that part out of us. Yeah, sure. thank you so much for that. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, the panelists, thank you so much uh, for uh, sharing with us. Um, now let's give the audience a minute to send us the question and we will attend the question shortly. Stay tuned. Thank you 
for asking a very good question. We have a couple in here. Okay, so let me read the first one. With the COVID-19 pandemic sending the aviation industry into a spin, many parents and students are worried that the future may not be so bright in the aviation or aerospace industry. What do you have to say about this? Okay, let's have uh, Kim. What do you think of this, Kim? I've been asked this question many times. Um, I only have a few things that I would like to um, to highlight, and that is our industry is cyclical. The nature of the industri industry is cyclical. So there are there are ups, there are downs. Uh, it, you know, it's inevitable. So we are seeing right now, unfortunately, um, the down the downs of the industry, right? But we survived SARS. We survived. Um, 9-11 we did we don't know how we did it but we did yeah. and i think that um, for students who are starting on their degrees now in two or three years time when the industry picks up they are very well positioned to um to write that that uptake again so i think i wouldn't worry too much about current students who are taking their uh, degrees in aviation studies. But what about, you may ask, what about graduating classes? And that's why I tell them to upskill and pivot. I understand that right now opportunities are very limited and we all recognize that. I mean, it is it is a, a well-known fact. So in Singapore, we have the Skills Future, um, you know, initiative to get um, Singaporeans to learn new skills, whether it's in the area of data analytics or whether in the area of AI or whether it's in the area of, uh, you know, something that that, that um, appeals to them, but upskill yourself. And also, I've also seen a trend of students going for master's degree after bachelor's, after their bachelor's program. Is it a good move? I think, again, it all depends on the outcomes that you want. So. I think that these are interesting trends. Um, it is, it is, it is a fact that the industry will pick up because aviation is the only industry that connects, connects uh, industries, connect cultures, connect populations. We cannot not open up our borders. It is a matter of time. So in the meantime, do whatever it takes to upskill, pivot you know, and write it out, whether is it via upskilling, reskilling, or via taking on another higher degree. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Kim. Uh, I am 100% with you. Don't worry too much. Do what is right, okay? Uh, we will definitely uh, go back in there. No one else can do what we in aviation do. We connect. We connect every continent, yeah. every state, country. You know, we do that all the time. We will definitely come back. And yes, we cannot not to open the border. Definitely, the government, the authority, regulators are doing everything best they could to open the border very soon. Question number two, aviation is a specialization. So many of the people who lost their jobs over the past year are caught with no other survival skill. How are your schools addressing this in the context of new syllabus, new programs, and etc. That's Right. Um, yes, indeed. I think um, aviation is very specialized. Yes. And uh, one thing that I always remind my students is um, sometimes uh, it's not just specialized, but sometimes the promising that in terms of the in terms of the job prospect and also the salary that can actually be brought, uh, yes. you know, that can entice them. Yes. You know? So before COVID-19 hits us, you know, um, you know, there, there was uh, nothing to worry about. Yeah. Right, there was nothing to worry about. Yeah. I see that a lot of my students, you know, uh, after completing their diploma, uh, they just pursue their diploma. Uh, they just pursue their their, their career. Right, uh, they don't have a second thought. It's actually pursuing the degree, you know, and all that. But I always remind them one thing, uh, Aida. Um, the thing that I always remind them is that whatever professional certifications that you have it only valids, it has an expiration date. Yes. It only valids for a certain number of years, right? In the future, you need to have 
and insurance policy. Oh, yes. Yeah, right? Yeah. So we see what's happening now in COVID-19. When, when COVID-19 hits us, right, a lot of the pilots, you know, were, were laid off. You know, a lot of the engineers were laid off. And a lot of them carry so many experience, vast yeah. of experience, yeah. but they don't have quali uh, education qualification. Correct. So how can organizations like MIAD or, for, exam for example, Politan Banting or, you know, how can they contribute back to the society uh, when they don't have this, yes. right? So this is something that we realize and then the, gov the, the government realize it, right? So there need to be something that they can fall back on. Yes. So I always remind my students, you know, whatever you do, you know, how passionate you are, you need to have an insurance policy. Yes. And education is the best insurance policy there is, right? It's the best edu uh, insurance policy there are. And no one can ever take, take that it away from away you. Away from exactly. You. Yeah. Exactly. But to answer the question, right? Yeah. We understand that a lot of people who have been retrenched and they caught up with no survival skills. What are we doing to help them? Right. right? Well, in fact, the government realized this, and they have installed a few initiatives. In fact, and we have UniKL have taken um, the step to actually uh, introduce this initiative as well. They call accreditation uh, prior experience, um, experiential learning, right? Oh, well APEL, uh, whereby they, they take into account the experience that they have, right? right. Which uh, is equivalent to a diploma or a degree, which then they can pursue their masters. So th yeah, so they don't have to pursue, um, you know, a, a normal bachelor degree that will take four years, right? They will, they will take into account your experience, right? And we have adopted it, right? To give, to give opportunity for these people. Right. That's a good news. That's a good news as well. And there's yeah. another one. Yeah, um, it's micro credential. Okay. okay. Unbundling of the programs that we have. So we can offer them. So those who are still working, they can also pursue their study. Right. And those who have not uh, 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 looking at a different career, they can also take courses in which towards their liking. Right. right? right. So these are the initiatives that we are embarking at this moment to help these people. But the key thing, the key point that we have to take away uh, from, from this question is that education is the best insurance policy, right? right? right. So don't ignore that. Uh, remember that that is yeah. so true in whatever uh, uh, situation, circumstances, education is always the best insurance policy and yeah. no, one, no one could possibly ever take that away from you. Exactly. Okay, number three. <coughs> Do you see the new normal of uh, digital technology and smart technology will take the demand for aviation and aerospace qualified personnel less employable? Um, Mr. Aizuddin. Okay, thanks Aida. Uh, but for that, I, cannot, I could not agree more than uh, what Dr. Fizita shared just now. In fact, in uh, Polytechnic Banting, uh, we offer the students, they have an option. It's uh, either they're taking the license alone, you know, for aircraft maintenance license, or they can uh, do a diploma as well with an aircraft maintenance license. Uh, I cannot agree more than that, uh, Dr. Vizi. Yeah. It's a good uh, uh, fact. Uh, with regards to the question, uh, uh, me myself as a licensed engineer, uh, in aviation we have uh, so many kinds of inspection. We have visual inspection, uh, detailed visual inspection, you know. To ease us in the process, yes, you could use technology, but to get the detail output of the, you know, uh, of the process of the inspection process, you still need human being to carry out the task. You know, it can never be the same. You know, computer and human beings. Yes, computer it is your job, but human beings decide whether the computer does it correctly or not. Right. So in the long term, mm, it could be the possibilities are there. Uh, people will get, even nowadays, people are less dependable on uh, human beings. Uh, they're using computers more. But uh, if you're talking about aviation, especially in the field of aircraft maintenance, human engagement will always be there. Mm. Uh, it will always be there. Mm. Uh, it's possible for you to get... Uh, I've been working in a maintenance repair organization before, in MRO hangar. I've been working in line maintenance. Uh, I couldn't see any, any scenario or any possibilities machine you know doing the job you know holding range going to the aircraft you know talking to the pilots listening to the defects you know it's kind of uh, it could be but it take more than who knows 100 years yeah. but for now human engagement will still be needed yeah. so uh, employability shouldn't be a problem especially when the pandemic ends yeah. i think uh, yeah that's it yeah thank you mm. uh, thank you mr Isidid. 
uh, we human certain things there is only human and human can perform it so so well no machine can do our job okay so don't worry so much <laughs> number four to be realistic getting back to anywhere near pre-covid condition the aviation and industry the aviation and aerospace industry will take no less than three years yep. How are your school positioning yourself to ride the wave? I open this to our panelists. Uh, feel free to answer. Right. Um, okay. Uh, Miat, for instance, uh, I do agree with it, uh, whoever is actually asking this question. I mean, it's, it is correct that, li like I said before, um, looking at all the economic crisis that we have gone through, uh, this COVID-19 is the worst by far. Oh, yes. 60% drop decline in terms yeah. of, uh, um, well, whatever performance that we, if we compare to the last yeah. uh, year, uh, or if we compare this with any other crisis, right? So it's going to take a while, definitely. But I also mentioned uh, one thing, Ida, that one thing that is, has advanced very rapidly during this COVID-19 is the, the uh, advancement of the digital, digital world. We see that during the COVID-19, how many people uh, start uh, shopping online, you yes. know? And then because of that, you know, if you look at the IKO report, uh, one sector of the aviation, a proper prosper that much is, yeah. the, uh, cargo. is the cargo, right? <laughs> and a lot of the airlines is taking initiative of the P2F, you know, yes. uh, the passenger to freighter kind of initiative, right? So we uh, as a school we we cannot actually um, escape from this you know yeah. so we see that the way forward for us is to also to go digital right all right to go digital to offer courses online as well yeah. all right because that's the market out there we cannot be too reliant upon the the uh, local students so we have to go international right. right but if we go international right there is also an issue in terms of um, student visa you know, yeah. They cannot travel and come in, yeah. right? So there are issues there. So one of the ways um, that, we, that we handle this is like what I mentioned before, we offer through micro-credentials. Right. So we just offer them uh, programs or courses in itself only. Right. Uh, for instance, right. like uh, Mr. Zuzin mentioned that a human factor. Right. So if anyone out there uh, around the world that would like to learn with Polytechnic Banting or with Miat, just on the topic of human factor, yeah you're much welcome. And we can provide you that. And so this will be done online. Fantastic. Yeah, so this is how actually we can actually cushion out yes. uh, the, COVID, uh, the, the, the impact of COVID-19 to, to at least for me act, right? right? So um, the way forward that, that, I, that, that I see is that um, we cannot uh, escape the, um, the di digital world, yes. right? We cannot ignore the fact that everything yes. has moved digital. Yes. Right. Uh, Kim, would you like to add on on this? Um, yes, so I think that um, in my current context, what we have done is uh, multi-prong. The first one would be ensuring that students are equipped with uh, industry-relevant skill sets as well as uh, knowledge. Um, and also, I think in recent, in recent months, we've also introduced um, students to the fact that it is so important to have internships it is also very important yeah. to do industry specific projects that has that has never changed our focus on that has never never changed but i think uh in the covid uh in the covid context that we are operating in right now there is there is a stronger emphasis on how can we um help students uh, navigate a the industry post COVID. So I think last year the discussions was mostly on how do we help our graduating uh, students navigate COVID, right? You know, and employability. But now we are really looking at how we can how we can help our students navigate uh, the industry after COVID because it will be a very different industry. Are you ready for that? So have you have you have you actually attained and you know and worked on your digital skills have you done the necessary have you read up enough have you have you gone into the industry to find out what are the, the deep tech trends that are happening so that's one and we have also created 
uh, continuing profession, uh, professional courses, short courses yeah. that are open to members of the public. So um, some of our best uh, causes that have been very popular with uh, the public would be cyber security, right? So the aviation industry has always been, I mean, we are, we are basically very, very concerned about uh, security issues. So cyber security is also one uh, very popular cause that has actually yeah, gained a lot of popularity with the masses. So that's, that's one of the key trends, you know, being aware of which parts of the industry are hiring and how are you equipped to to take to take on these new roles because the industry would have changed very much so so that's um the other thing and thirdly also to i think to also understand that um we our role as educators as a university is also to make sure that students stay interested students stay engaged and will join the industry uh, via the university, you know, uh, after the pandemic. So we are doing our part by also creating innovation uh, competitions, regional wide innovation um, competitions that are open to countries like India, uh, Bangladesh, Korea, um, you know, China, Malaysia, and we have received many applications uh, to join this competition. So we see it as also our way of paying it forward, keeping uh, the next generation, keeping the, the, the young people interested in our industry by, you know, giving them problem statements to solve and all of that. So yeah, that's how we're doing it. Fantastic. Thank you, Kim. Um, um, perhaps you would like to add uh, something, Mr. Aizuddin? Okay, thanks, Aida. Uh, uh, aviation, especially aircraft maintenance, you know, it's uh, once you're involved in the industry, it's a continuing process of learning. Right. Yeah, as long as you're in the industry, you'll keep on learning until you, you, know, you end up, you finish, you cut off from the industry. So with regards to polytechnic banting, uh, we have the so-called the three years grace period before the industry is back to normal. So what we could do to our students is we fed them everything we could, you know, uh, the knowledge, the experience, the hands-on things, the skills that they needed, so that once the industry is normalized, they can be back on track, they can have the sufficient knowledge, and there can be no problem with them once they join the industry someday. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, all my friends out there who's watching, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, this ASBA Discovery uh, session definitely uh, something that is very important, close to my heart. And we, we, we receive a lot of feedback. We see the benefit. We, we see the value that we, we bring to the community, to the institution. And in ASBA, we would love to continue doing this. Thank you for all of our panelists here today. Yeah, no uh, Kim uh, from Singapore, uh, Dr. Hafizi from Mian, and Mr. Aizuddin from Polytechnic Most Banting. Uh, ladies and gen gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for joining the session, uh, staying with us. And we really appreciate this in ASBA. We actually uh, stand strong with this three pillar the advocacy, the presentation, and the community. So the ASBA discovery part is doing uh, a lot more on that community part. So thank you. Thank you to all the sponsors. Thank you to the participant. Thank you to Ministry of Transport Malaysia. Thank you to Civil Aviation Authority Malaysia. Thank you. Thank you very much to all of our platinum sponsors. The South Aviation, Gulfstream and World Fuel. Thank you to all the sponsors. Thank you so much for making this big event a reality today. Thank you so much. And uh, that's the end of our session. I would like to pass this back to Anthony from Hong Kong. Thank you.